This is a headgum podcast. Folks, it's time to get quip. Me and Joe do it. It makes toothbrushing easy. Brushing your teeth, just like making love. The kind of thing you don't really know if you're doing it right till you start doing it right. And folks, quip is brushing done right. It's the new electric toothbrush that packs just the right amount of vibrations into a slimmer design at a fraction of the cost of bulkier traditional electric brushes. It has guiding pulses that alert you when to switch sides, making brushing just the right amount of effortless. It's true. You really don't have to think about it. It lets you know when to move on to another quadrant of your mouth. Quip also comes with a mount that suctions right to your mirror and unsticks to use as a cover for hygienic travel anywhere, whether it's going in your gym bag or your carry-on. And because the thing that cleans your mouth should also be clean, Quip subscription plan or subscription plan, surprised they didn't think of that, I'll, I'll have to let them know, refreshes your brush on a dentist-recommended schedule. They deliver new brush heads every three months for just five bucks, including free shipping worldwide. Quip's backed by a network of over 10,000 dental professionals, including dentists, hygienists, and dental students. Most toothbrushes don't get named one of Time Magazine's best inventions of the year, but Quip did. It's time to find out for yourself why. Quip starts at just 25 bucks, and if you go to getquip.com slash see you right now, you'll get your first refill pack free with a Quip electric toothbrush. That's your first refill pack free at getquip.com slash see you. G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash see you. Folks, it's going to be love at first brush. Hello, everybody, and welcome to a brand new episode of We'll See You in Hell with myself, Patrick Walsh, and my dear, dear friend, Joe DeRosa. And uh, I guess all intros out of the way, we can get on with the show. And while we're at it, folks, on with a Joe. <laughs> I like that one. It was sultry. scared your dog. You didn't scare him. He just was like, what's happening over there? It was a sultry one. How are you, Walsh? I'm doing good. Uh, Folks, on today's show, we're going to talk about the landmark Supreme Court case of Freddie versus Jason (laughs) that changed the way mutants uh, were perceived in society. Yes. Yes. Much like the X-Men films. Yes. Uh, You're doing well. I'm doing good, Joe. It's it's a nice day. I went... uh, I, I decided, you know... I'm not going to drink. You decided the same thing, at least for a month. Mm-hmm. Been off a week. It feels fine. I haven't, you know, I don't have cravings or shakes or anything like that. Yeah. Um, I did uh, find that my weed card was expiring yesterday. Uh-huh. And a little frantically, I called and I said, if it expires on the 19th, does that mean <laughs> you can still take it on the 19th? <laughs> <laughs> like my voice quivering with fear. <laughs> right. She was like, yeah, you can still use it today. I was in the car like smoke outline of my body hanging in the air <laughs> drove up to the old green wolf and i decided i'm just gonna like blow out whatever's in my wallet on weed and then not renew my thing be yeah. done with weed forever i'll probably we- weasel my way back into some i'm not i'm not not gonna, not gonna take a joint at a party or something but um yeah just done, maybe done with getting like the card and it's too much access to weed and weed feels too good I wish and I felt it, that way. I uh, I don't like it as much as you do, and uh, I, I haven't really even, do. I haven't smoked it once since the, since sobriety. I could do it without drinking and be uh, total. I'd, I'd I'd take weed over drinking at this point. I really would. That, well, then you got to figure it out. Why do you want to get rid of it? Yeah, you're right. Because I I tend to, I, I wind up doing like weed and drinking. Well, if you can just do the weed, I mean, God bless you, man. That's I what might, I would. I do. mean, maybe, but I I, I bought a nice amount. I, I love the people over there at Green Wolf. Uh, me too. Wonderful um, staff. They they don't sponsor us, but we'll give them a yeah. plug. The Green Wolf here in the Los Feliz area. They do great work. They always throw in a free joint. Um, yeah. And, a, you know, it, 
uh, the, the world the way it is, I'm not going to go into this at all. You need it. You need something. I don't do antidepressants, you know. I that, That's my antidepressant. It works well. Yeah. Well, hey, mine was whiskey. <laughs> and my wife was frisky. <laughs> the, uh, I do want to say, though, uh, several people, because last week I said, uh, or, you know, whatever, two weeks ago, I said, you never hear anyone say, boy, I sure enjoy the political discourse on. We'll see you in hell. <laughs> so I got like 10 tweets, yeah. 10 Facebook comments that said, I really enjoy the political discourse. We'll see you in hell, which I love. Yeah. But then I also got this, folks. I bristle at broad stroke statements like this that helped get Trump elected. I laugh out loud. It will see you in hell. But fast forward through your armchair political comments. That's How uh, did, what, what are the what are the broad statements that helped get Trump elected? Her name is Lynn. Well, I said at this point, if you support Trump, you're a racist. I said it in so many words. OK, on the pod. I think she's referring to. I also had a tweet that said basically that. And But she's against Trump, yet she thinks you helped get him elected. She's very pro Trump. Oh, she's it's, pro. It's Trump. a little confusing. Oh, yes. well, Lindsay, let's just sum it up now. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> yeah. Fuck That's you. Exactly and if you don't right. like what we're saying, go fuck yourself. That's exactly right. You know, I did, though, I wanted to offer you um, all of your money back that you've paid us for for doing this show for two years and all these episodes and yeah. literally days of entertainment. And I really um, mean that, Lindsay. Fuck you. <laughs> um, this isn't like so, a, a, pay, a bantery funny podcast thing. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> you're a fucking idiot. Yeah, I just um, actually while Joe was talking there, I realized uh, you actually haven't given us a fucking dime. And it's our podcast that we do for free to entertain you. And we'll talk about whatever the fuck we want. Yeah. And by the way, is it not balanced enough <laughs> when one of the hosts is going, well, I didn't see the clip of him saying d- denying to, to denounce right. the KKK. So I don't want to make an opinion on that yet. Right. Is it not? Is that not balanced enough that that we're, we you got one guy saying this is what I saw. This is what I think you got another guy saying I'm only going to speak as far as hey, I'm educated. I, I'll tell you what, Joe, you, you know, uh, we're doing a movie podcast we don't have to be balanced to anything no we're not we're not cnn fake news you fake news <laughs> we're a fucking movie podcast we talk about whatever the hell we want to <laughs> i'm Good so sick Lord. of it i was watching the golden free girls. entertainment yeah free entertainment i was watching the golden girls today this yeah. is what twitter has done i'm so glad you brought that up because i didn't see that tweet the, this is it what, just went to me just okay. To me. This is what Twitter has done. This is what social media and the internet has done. To these she had two followers, by the way. These fucking morons that live in this goddamn country. Other countries are using it to, to have a revolution. This fucking idiotic country. This is what people are using it for. And uh, this is the problem. Uh, I'm, I'm watching the Golden Girls today, and uh, they're talking about. Doesn't the, sound like a problem to me. Uh, it was wonderful. Yeah. They're talking about it's during the potential nuclear war crisis when Reagan was president. Yeah. You know, because this is the first time there's ever been talk of nukes. So everybody freak out. Yeah. Because it's never happened before. <laughs> you fucking baby children. Anyway, um, <sighs> they're talking about the nukes and Rose is like, I'm very upset. I don't I'm very afraid of nuclear weapons. And they're like, well, what are you going to do? Like, it's you know, it's hopefully nothing happens. Whatever. And then Rose goes, I'm going to write a letter to the president. And Dorothy's like, you can't be serious, Rose, <laughs> right? Yeah. This is how much people's that brains... could not be on television today. Yeah, this is how much people's brains have changed. People now literally think, well, I'm going to tweet at Trump and tell him what I think. Yeah. And then they, or I'm going to tweet at Obama, tell him what I think. Well, then they it, get blocked by them and they get all excited because then it's like, he did see it. <laughs> and not just some advisor who's combing through tweets. It's just, it's so crazy. It's yeah. like, it's it, so, so... Well, it's like the guy who puts like, uh, you know... Hey, hey, gay date me, you know, in the comments of Rihanna's Instagram. Yeah. We're yeah, like eight exactly. million people are liking each photo. Exactly. And he throws his hat in the ring. Exactly. Or the guy who comments on porn. Exactly. What are you doing? Exactly. Stop it. Yeah. These fucking, you don't have to let people know you're watching porn. These hard on guys that write keep it to, to yourself that write to like they do it to like female comics a lot. They'll like write to them and be like. I saw your act, and I just want to say you are beautiful, yeah. and I would marry you. Yeah. And then these these women have to write back and be like, you fucking idiot. <laughs> it's my goddamn stand-up. I'm not standing on the ledge of a building. Yeah. Go fuck yourselves. Everybody yeah. can suck my dick. Yeah, they could. You know the by the sea ringtone? Da-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na
What? On the iPhone. No, never heard that before. You never heard the By the Sea ringtone? It's my favorite. You like the soundtrack to the Angelina Jolie Brad Pitt vehicle? By the Sea? <laughs> I forgot that, that that even existed. Or do you mean Beyond the Sea, the Kevin Spacey starring as Bobby Darren <laughs> biopic? Now, did you see that flick? I saw 10 minutes of it. I couldn't believe my it eyes. Was a shit show. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I like Kevin Spacey, but God damn, it was bad. Okay, hold on. Let me he find can, it. He can do one thing great, and then when he goes outside of it, yikes. By the seaside. Here it is. Never heard it. Where's this going? Folks, I'm sorry. Okay, so my new thing now that because that's the that ringtone is my alarm clock in the morning. Yeah. So that goes off, and I wake up and immediately start singing to it. Uh, fuck, fuck the world. The world can suck my fucking dick. <laughs> fuck the world. The world can eat a bag of shit. Fuck the world inside wow. its ass. That's that's how the day starts. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so how much more time you got? You think on the planet? Yeah. I, I th- I'm gonna outlast all these fucking pussies. Oh, all right. Everybody's everybody's freaking out. Everybody's freaking out. Sure. I'm not happy with what's going on, but I'm not gonna freak out about it. I'm gonna be yeah, the guy with the sharpened stick in the dark <laughs> when all it all goes down. You're not gonna get it's me. It's going down. Probably. It's going right down. <laughs> but let's get off it for for Barbara, whatever the fuck her name was. <laughs> let's get let's talk about what Barbara wants to talk about. Barbara. We don't accept your letters. We Her don't name accept. wasn't even Barbara. I don't know what it was. I don't remember what it was, but no. Barbara seems like a good name. She for it. she tweets at only us and uh, Adam Carolla. Somebody wrote to me, though, too, that was like, oh, blah, blah, blah. Please get past the political. I commentary. saw a few of them. We shouldn't just be beating up on Barbara, whose name no. definitely wasn't And this Barbara. one was a guy. So this was, this was a dumb dickhead. Yeah. A dumb dick. Well, I guess a woman. Anybody could be a dickhead these yeah. days. I don't mean to gender uh, discriminate. No, I mean, um, that's kind of the beautiful thing about uh, America, uh, having a podcast, uh, et cetera. You can talk about whatever the fuck you want, and you can also not listen to it. These fucking people. You can people. also just not listen to it. This goddamn world we Doesn't live in. Doesn't change my pocketbook any. This goddamn world we live in, everything is just, everything is do it for me. Yeah. Yeah, I'm talking to this lady yeah. at the bank today. There's, there's your first mistake. Why? Well, I, I, because because I got a I got a fraudulent alert. I got a fraud hold put on my debit card because I tried to take money out of an ATM in the city I live in. <laughs> right. So I call and I'm like, lift the fraud alert. Why is it going off? What are you talking about? Yeah. And uh, and she goes, I'm really sorry. I'm going to file a complaint for you. I said, thank you. That's very helpful. And then like anytime you talk to somebody in customer service, she goes, we're going to send a survey. If you could send it. No. Your boss's fucking job is to monitor what kind of work you do. It's not my fucking job. That's I had never thought of it that way, but that's true. God damn it. I started down. I had a real helpful woman the other day, and I was like, yeah, I'll do this survey. I'm talking five minutes later, I'm on question 26. <laughs> like, well, well, now I'm I'm out. Just say, did was she good? Yes, no. I've got a life. Yeah, it's it's crazy. It's Trying crazy. to throw you a bone, but Jesus Christ, I'm giving these horrible Lyft drivers five stars just because I'm scared about them shooting back with a zero point zero. Oh, that's well, that's how they get you. It's, it's Black you. Mirror. It's Black Mirror. Yeah. You got a rating on you. I got one on me. Let's fucking deal. Yeah, that's the problem with politics. I got to get my bill passed. You got to get your bill passed. I hate you. You hate me. Let's fucking deal. How are this get world is bullshit and it's inhabited by shit people that do nothing except <laughs> spew and suck shit all day long yeah and it's not my fault i didn't do it <laughs> <laughs> oh, i didn't do it either i didn't say you did i'll tell you that much i know con here the dog asleep on just my amassing a, 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 in a, I'm, I'm at a GameStop level inventory of <laughs> uh, video games at this point because i don't want to leave the fucking house anymore <laughs> You don't have to leave the house. That's the beauty. That's the beauty. That is well, the, the the true beauty of America. You don't have to leave the house. Last I checked, I couldn't bang my Blu-ray player. Uh, you probably could. <laughs> Depending Maybe. on what you're working on. Be with. a sad state if your penis fit in that little <laughs> slot. Uh, folks. Let's get to Pat's movie corner. Let's get to Pat's movie corner. 
I want to again uh, kind of go to the past. I haven't really seen any new ones. Uh, shine a light on an old romantic comedy called My Best Friend's Wedding. <laughs> really? I watched it the other night. <laughs> I I brought up uh, at work the other day. I remembered at the height of like Tarantino mania, mm-hmm. and I was uh, so amped up about Jackie Brown that year. I saw it on Christmas Day. I remember. And that night, I think, Quentin Tarantino was on Charlie Rose, and Charlie Rose asked him what his favorite movie of the year was, and he blurted back, my best friend's wedding. (laughs) Okay. And he goes, I think that to me, and like maybe Bringing Up Baby are two of the finest romantic comedies ever made. Um, I think it immediately goes on. And I remember this interview, and I was talking about it for for whatever reason. Um, So it was on TV. It's the 20th anniversary. I watch it. Everybody in this fucking movie is a sociopath. (laughs) Have you seen this movie? No. Why would? I? <laughs> I mean, it plays like a a no laugh track Seinfeld. <laughs> she, uh, well, first off, she's twenty eight. She promised her best friend that if they weren't married by twenty eight, they'd marry each other. This is Julia Roberts. Julia Roberts. Is this the movie where uh, the trailer ended with her in the ballpark going, "I got moves you don't even know about," <laughs> holding the hot dog? Oh, no, that's uh. <laughs> What is that? Oh, something to talk about? Oh, yeah. I think that's something to talk yeah, about. Yeah, that's well, that belongs in that movie. Yeah. It's a little sassy. No, um, she she's a complete hateful sociopath that you want to die throughout this movie. She's so <laughs> awful. And so her friend, you know, is uh, Dermot Mulroney. And he comes in and he's like, hey, I got to tell you, I'm getting married. So she's like, oh, fuck. So the whole rest of the movie is her trying to destroy their engagement. And it's played by a 20-year-old Cameron Diaz in her prime who is like really funny and really good and lovable in this movie. Uh-huh. She's the only decent human being because behind her back, this sweet girl has Roberts and uh, Mulroney like walking in on each other naked, flirting, kissing, uh, talking about all, uh, memories of their old sex life together, on and on and on. And meanwhile, we got old Cameron Diaz just planning planning a wedding, all excited to be getting married. So Roberts is trying to sabotage it to the extent that Cameron Diaz has a severe fear of karaoke. She takes them to a karaoke bar. She forces her to sing. She has a horrific voice. This is the best scene of the movie. Cameron Diaz plays it really well. Uh She's embarrassed and they're booing her. But then she's so charming that she wins them over. And Julia Roberts is like embarrassed because now people only love her more. It's a really good scene. All right. But then things get to a place where Julia Roberts is sending emails to Dermot Mulroney's employers to fuck up his job situation. She's counseling uh, Cammy Diaz, as James Limpton would say. She's counseling her to give Mulroney an ultimatum because she knows that Mulroney hates ultimatums. So he does this. She does this in front of Julia Roberts, who's like all but cackling in the corner as she shatters this beautiful young couple's engagement. That's terrible. For her own benefit. That's terrible. It's sick. It's a sick <laughs> film. Yeah. This movie made like $200 million. I saw it in theaters when it came out. Yeah. I don't know how I thought any of this behavior was normal. Did you like it when it came out? I did. I liked it a lot. I saw it on like a first date. Young girl with a last name of Powderly. Powerly? Pa- uh, Powderly. Oh, that's an interesting last name. <laughs> it is. Yeah. I'm the, not going to tell you her first name. But. Well, okay. So, uh, it, all right. So it's not. I mean, I, look. I mean, I think if you went back and watched some of the Seinfelds without the laugh track, it would seem insane. I, I, I know, but you just don't think of Julia Roberts in like that. Bi- she's the villain of it. But she's the good guy, though. You're supposed to look at her as the good guy. Or no? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. I don't it, understand. I think. Why wouldn't they make? I think under the lens of 1997 when it came out, I think you were supposed to view her as the hero and be on her side. Why wouldn't they just make Cameron Diaz's because character? Because Diaz un- wasn't big at the time. But no. Why wouldn't they make her unlikable? So then you're rooting for Julia. Right. I don't understand why you're. I mean, Diaz could sack up a little bit. She's like willing to give up her life for her man a, l- a little bit too much, or whatever. They give her some flaws, but really, she's just a, a kind, innocent person who's just having her her life walked all over by this frankly a sociopath well with who shows no remorse no emotions there was three lines from a young paul giamatti always great to see in a 90s movie what who did he play in it some some bellhop 
Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, she's smoking in the hallway, and he's like, it's a non-smoking hallway. That's my Paul Juma. <laughs> and uh, she's like, you smoke, and they share a nice cigarette moment together. Okay. But I think very next year, he was in uh, Negotiator. That's where I... Negotiator is where I first remembered him, and then I saw him well, in Private, private parts, parts. of course. Yeah. Private Parts was the same year, 97. So, yeah, same year he was Pig Vomit. He was... Uh, in that best friend's wedding, if I'm not mistaken, I yeah, love Private Parts so much. It's the it's the greatest. It's a really wonderful film. It's the, it's the it's the well the 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 third act of G. I wish the third act they made. I wish they made a whole movie of G, the Giamatti character. Yeah, oh, I agree. <laughs> I'd watch his. I'd watch a, a weekly series of that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I saw. Uh, I'll also shine a light on a movie that I'd already seen that I rewatched and I. Just find it to be a wonderful film. It did not get the credit I feel that it deserved okay. from critics, but uh, the movie is God's Pocket. Say, oh, no, I didn't say it. Never saw it. Starring uh, the late Philip Seymour Hoffman, the great John Turturro. Um, uh, they play two, uh, you know, sort of knock around guys. Sure. Hustlers, whatever. Philip Seymour Hoffman is married to the i can never remember her name someone the, far more attractive than him i'm sure it's 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 not even close yeah it's uh it's 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 the like the, like in uh um for the devil knows you're dead where he's fucking tomei at the beginning tomei and her prime this, this him is, and his anti-prime yeah 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 that's insane this is even crazier because it's the lady from mad men oh hendrix yes christina hendrix yeah right. like the most striking woman to ever walk the planet and who's also like 31 or or 29 or something when they yeah. shot this thing yeah he looks like he looks like he's pushing 60 <laughs> right you know um but they're all great in it what's his face is in it too another guy whose name i always forget um the bongo guy the movie about the bongos we got nominated for the oscar the bongos <clears throat> you mean the drums the movie about the where he played whiplash the, no the guy that made the station agent, his follow movie was about the guy that started. Oh, play, Richard yeah. the uh, Jenkins, the visitor. Yeah, Richard Jenkins. Yeah, the the visitor. Yeah, which is a terrifying name for a film that's supposed to be that heartfelt. That <laughs> right. doesn't sound like no. a pleasant movie. Anyway, he's in it. He plays a drunk uh, that writes about the town, God's Pocket. It's based on a neighborhood in Philadelphia called Devil's Pocket. Okay. Um, but you know, super blue collar opening. One of the opening lines of the movies, uh, the movie is the the people of this town can forgive anything except for not being from God's pocket. That of course plays a role significantly or ultimately. Uh, you know, it's not a crazy story. Christina Hendricks' son dies. If it's Philip Seymour Hoffman's stepson, and you know, it kind of goes from there. And right. the son is played by that kid on Twin Peaks who I have never seen play a decent human being. The guy who, like, beats up the giant woman in her trailer? No. The guy that's married to the girl from Mamma Mia, who's, like, the Mama cokehead. Mia. I can't remember anybody's names anymore. The girl from Mamma Mia, though, I mean. Oh, Seafried. Yeah. Amanda Seafried. Yes. Her husband. Okay, who's yes. Who's, like, the horrible, horrid cokehead. Right. Yeah. It's him. He's also the brother in Get Out. Yes. Who right. like can't contain his racism yes. long enough to pull the scheme off. <laughs> right. You know, like, yes. <laughs> I, I mean, he just plays a piece. I got to see the movie again. A piece of shit in this movie. Okay. Like I'm talking makes makes the get out guy <laughs> almost look tolerable. All right. I'm going to watch it. <laughs> like, you know, like, what is he like an anti-Semite? He's just he's just a horrific racist drug addict. Okay. Horrible like waste of a human being in this movie he's horrible okay um i'll check her so, out so yeah but uh but it's a, it's a really great flick and uh critics kind of panned it but I, I thought it was really great uh, it's heartbreaking it's also very very funny many times and a friend of mine carmine is in it uh and he's very funny in it and uh yeah so check that uh i'm gonna watch it and i think i got us advanced tickets to see it up at warner brothers shut up i think we're gonna get in this week Shut up. That's this what week? That's like. what it looks like. <sighs> don't tease me. I'm not I, I, I'm not confirming, but it, it could it could happen. Don't tease me, baby. You're saying this if, Mr. Mercedes show is pretty good. Yeah, uh, we talked. We touched on it a little bit last week. Um, I had not read Mr. Mercedes. I own it and haven't gotten around to it. 
So I thought maybe I'd do the thing like I did in high school where I tried to read the stand before the CBS miniseries started. Right. And then just wound up watching the movie. Um, movie almost almost as long as the book. I know. Yeah. So that's what I did with this Mr. Mercedes. I started it. I was into it. And then I was like, I'll watch the movie. But uh, Brendan Gleeson is awesome in it. The guy, whoever's playing the uh, the killer is awesome in it. But this thing starts with a guy who lives in his basement and is definitely like having an incestuous relationship with his mom. They're his, actually hooking up or he just wants to have sex. He's with like staring at her crotch. They kiss. Okay. It's he jacks off after they have a conversation. But you assume something has happened at some point. Um, you know, and it's like it's like heat. They show you his side. They show you the cop side. The cops retired. Gleason is awesome. And, I thought this uh, was about a car salesman. This show. No, <laughs> no. Well, at the beginning, the reason for the title is he drives a Mercedes into a large rally of people. And I cannot believe that they didn't immediately in this day and age pull that show right off the air. Well, because usually that's what they do. I can tell you, I auditioned just for that happened. show. I auditioned. I didn't get it. I auditioned for it well over a year ago. Do you know what the part was? I auditioned to play the boss at the electronics. Store. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, the guy who's in it is really good. Um, um, and they told me I was too, uh, like, flippant, okay. which is how I thought it should be. Yeah. You know, I thought it should be a prick. <laughs> and they're like, bring it down a little bit. And I did it, but I didn't think, I don't know. Maybe I just wasn't right for it. Anyway, Stephen King himself said to me, you're too flippant. Really? No. Pat. Oh, well, I thought maybe you got that far on the audition process. I don't think he is any part of the audition process. <laughs> Sometimes he's an EP on these projects. <laughs> he wants to make sure they get it done right. Uh, do you got anything else that you've seen? Well, I I guess, you know, I, I know we have a lot of crossover in our audience for this, but I've watched now all of Rick and Morty. And I just kind of don't know what I'm missing. But I know, I know it's very smart. It looks awesome, and that should be enough. But I think it had just been hyped to the extent where I'm just I'm never laughing at it. I'm always saying that's really clever, that's really smart. Have you seen the show? I haven't, but I feel that way with every. I'm going to say something very controversial right okay. now. I feel that way about every single animated co adult comedy I have ever seen, including The Simpsons. Well, I watch. I can it. show you some Simpsons, but look, I, I'm not saying I've never laughed out loud in any of it. Yeah. But I watch it, I go, most of the time I go, that's a very well-written joke. That's interesting. Yeah. But it does not engage me in a way, it's never going to pull me in the way like Trading Places does, where I'm so into it and I'm laughing sure. hysterically. It's just, I'm just not going to invest in it the same. And it's something about the animation. I love uh, dramatic animated stuff. I don't really like comedic animated stuff. I can see that. I guess other than Simpsons and South Park, I never really got into anything either. But there, I mean, there are ten years of The Simpsons that I would put up with anything in comedy. And I'm not saying certainly the early days of South Park before it got tired. I'm not saying you're wrong. Some I mean, of the I, episodes I used to howl at that fucking show. Some of the episodes of South Park are some of the most brilliant, yeah, things I've ever seen. But yeah. it it still never made me go. Well, I want to keep watching. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. I just don't like cartoons that much. Uh, I, I agree guess. with you on that. I mean, I I don't even the Pixar's. I'm always kind of like, eh. oh god, those those could never be made again. I wouldn't give a shit. Yeah, people fact, really lose their race. shit over them. Yeah, I know. Let me tell you, I, the day. they look they look amazing, but I'm always like I'm a one and done. I'm like that looked incredible. I'm glad I saw it. Whatever, but let me tell you about the day I was in an office space in L.A. Okay, and uh, uh, five grown people in their 30s were going, "Oh my God, you saw Inside Out? Don't no spoilers, no spoilers." <laughs> Th that's the town we live in. Uh, anyway, yeah. uh, well, let's get to the film at hand. Oh, one more thing. Yeah, I don't really have anything else, but I will just a quick Joe Scary stuff. I did receive oh. the Creep Show double vinyl. I can't urge you enough to go buy it. It is fucking beautiful. They it is a stunning piece of work. All right. Every horror fan, especially if you're a fan of Creep Show 2, should own this. It's just a just a really 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 beautifully produced piece of work. So check that out uh, cuz I mentioned it last week but I hadn't received it yet. And now yeah, I don't have anything for scary stuff. That's all right. All right. Movie at hand. Freddy versus Jason. We the both movie at Claude hand. <laughs> we both rewatched it today. Yeah, rewatched it today. I uh, 
This is in typical fashion. Usually, whenever I'm about to open something on my uh, Blu-ray shelf or my DVD uh-huh. shelf, especially in my Criterions, I go, you know what? I better make sure this thing hasn't gone out of print. Right. Especially because Blu-rays, I would say, lightly endangered. You know, right. at this point. So I have a big Blu-ray collection, and I Joe goes, "You want to do uh, Freddy vs. Jason?" I say, "Sure." I've got this thing I got for fifty dollars at the Warner Brothers store mm-hmm. collection of all the Jason movies, plus the remake of Friday the Thirteenth, plus Freddy vs. Jason, plus a huge bonus disc with like documentaries and shit on it. Got it for like fifty bucks. So I grab it off the wall, absentmindedly, rip into it throw freddy versus jason into the thing i've had this for like three years right i don't i'm not a big fan of the franchise frankly and right after i do it something kind of just bothers me in my in my stomach i, I hop online i check it's going for eight hundred dollars oh 800 new oh you so that, hate to hear that a like new gets you know 250 you or hate something. to hear that i just would the, i have gotten it maybe not i just well, the opposite not. happened to me today I got uh, a copy of the Kolchak, the Night Stalker, and Night Strangler double feature DVD at Amoeba Records. Yeah. Uh, now, granted, it was used, but I got it for eighteen ninety nine, and starting price for it used online was like thirty two bucks or something. Hello. So, uh, not not quite an eight hundred dollars. Hello, difference. Mr. Profit. <laughs> right. But uh, did you now? Just overall, did you enjoy the film? What film? Freddy versus Jason. Freddy Pat. versus Jason. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, well, we've talked about a lot of stuff on this show, Joe. Uh, look, I didn't. I mean, it's not a good movie. <laughs> and in fact, I would actually call it a bad movie. Um, they keep them apart for most of the running time. And then basically the climax is two of history's greatest monsters punching each other on a dock. <laughs> I, I think that's you're over, the climax. I of think Freddy you're oversimplifying, but but we can get into all this. All right. I will say this: the first time I saw the film, I hated it. I love the nudity at the beginning. What does it even do for a man who's dead inside anymore? I mean, it still gave me a little rush, uh, a little jolt. The uh, the in my uh, pants. I, I hated it when I saw I saw it on opening day in the theater with Big J Okerson. We were on the road together, and we went to see it. And we said, "We know this is going to suck." Yeah. But we love the film. We love these characters. See, we I would have thought you'd be skipping into that theater like, yay. I, well, here's the thing. My I, heroes. I half was. Here's the reason I was was uh, was very hesitant. Yes. Now, first of all, you got to remember this, people. Freddy vs. Jason, that was like insane that that happened. Like yeah. That was a thing they talked about for years. <laughs> they... Uh, <laughs> They, they, it was never going to happen. The, these, the, you know, the, nowadays properties are get traded and, you know, Spider-Man shows up in the Marvel movies right. owned by Disney, even though he's owned by Sony and all that shit. The this nutty was, professor pops up in the dark night. It's like, well, what's going on? Here? Yeah. Yeah. You know, you got ready player one coming out with like every fucking pop culture character ever in it. Yeah. Uh, Wreck it Ralph, for example. I, I almost called it right said Fred. Right said Fred. Uh yeah so so tears but but when fears. this came out this was like a pretty big deal and I said I got to see this uh, I can't wait and then I saw an interview with Kelly Rowland from Destiny's Child who's one of the stars of the film <laughs> yeah and her, maybe the only time I ever saw her in a film maybe like an Urban Legends two or something. yeah yeah her one but, quote in the interview was yeah. this was the soundbite you you're all gonna you're all gonna love this film it's amazing and I said okay and she went. There's a great scene where Freddie and I get into a fight and it's hilarious. And I thought, well, there that's ruined. It'll be the worst movie of all time. <laughs> well, you're not you're not too far off. I mean, not only do they fight, but the fight starts with Kelly Rowland referring to Freddie as the F uh, homosexual slur that starts with F. Oh, um, you're skipping a beat. I fell off the couch, frankly, Before to, see, she- to see a member of Destiny's Child call Freddy Krueger the most hateful gay slur there is. <laughs> Before that, Freddy turns to her and says, how sweet dark meat. <laughs> yeah. He, so he's he throwing a little race play her way. Hits her with a racist joke. She yeah. hits him with an anti-Semitic. Yeah. Then she does this whole analogy about how his claws are making up for his dick. Yeah. Which and, and then she immediately contradicts. She goes, Jason has this big old hatchet 
and you have these tiny little butter knives. Right. And it's like, that doesn't make sense with the dick thing. No. <laughs> the, the knives would be really long. <laughs> she's like, yeah, can I, can I talk about the butter knives? Can I talk about the butter knives? Like yeah. she's roasting Freddie. Yeah, she she really goes into like a like a Wendy Williams style yeah. like dress down of <laughs> Freddie. It's terrible. What kind of f wears a Christmas sweater? Now, I bet that got a big laugh. You see that in Philadelphia? I I, <laughs> I bet that got a big I laugh saw up it in, in South Jersey. Oh, okay. It S- didn't get difference. a big laugh. We went to the three thirty p.m. showing. <laughs> there were about six of us in there. <laughs> six, six people in sweatpants. Uh. Now, here's the thing. I, I So I didn't like the film when I saw it in the theater, but then I bought it. There were things I liked about the film initially in the theater. No, right there. I didn't like it when I saw it in the theater, but then I bought it. Why, well, why would you buy cause, it? Because I'll tell you why. There were some things I initially liked that I did like in the theater when I saw it. They had a lot of nods to the to the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise they that did. I like. I like that they brought back the goat. The goats and the sheep are the animals in part one in Tina's dream. The snakes are part of the Freddy dreams in the in the first one. The hypnosil is from part three. The clinic the kids are in is from part three. The potato sack they throw over Jason's head in the flashback it is, the, you know, he wears the potato sack in Friday the 13th part two. There were some really, really cool nods where I thought, this guy kind of knows what he's doing. Like, I don't know. Maybe I'm missing this. So I, eventually, when I started really collecting DVDs and Blu-ray and whatnot, I had obtained every Freddy, Freddy movie, right, including the remake, which we'll get to. And I said, uh, well, I, I'm not going to not have Freddy versus Jason. So I bought it. It was like four bucks. Right. And the first thing I did when I came home was I watched the bonus features. And the first thing that the director said in the bonus features is, I wanted to do a throwback to a King Kong versus Godzilla, the great monster fight movies of the 1960s. Okay. And I said, okay, now I will rewatch it through that lens. <laughs> and honestly, it made it a lot better. All I right. liked it more. All right. I liked it more. So now when I watch, I know it's not great, but there are, there are some great things. Look, first of all, I love how reprehensible they make so many of the characters because then you, all you, you're cheering when they get killed. Yeah. I mean, the one kid is going to try to fuck the girl when she's unconscious. Yeah. And he gets stabbed like through the you're like cheering that Jason kills yeah. the guy. You know, that, that rave uh, was cracking me up. That rave in the middle of the cornfield. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, come on, guys. I enjoy could, that. Scene. Could somebody be drinking or uh, I mean, it just look like. The most Disney Channel rave. No, of all they were time. all drinking. They're all drinking beers, and uh, it just seemed very tame. To the me. kid even says, "This this Everclear is kicking my ass." Yeah. They're smoking ru- weed. What are you talking it about? It felt very tame to me. Well, it looked like a fake cornfield. I like it and Blade when they go in and somebody's getting fisted in the corner. <laughs> I like a, sp- a club, and then the sprinklers rain blood down. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, I I find that cornfield scene to I'm glad you brought it up. It is one of my favorite horror movies. It's my favorite. What, what's going on? Are you about to praise this as one of your favorite? No, I'm just I got notes moments? here and I'm reading them. That is my favorite Jason sequence I've ever seen. Like okay. uh, there's nothing better than I mean, for Christ's sakes, it starts with Jason being lit on fire. Yeah. And a flaming Jason walking through rows of corn, uh, the cornfield and then just going crazy with a fucking hatchet on people or machete. It's it's an awesome setting for a Jason. All right. For a right. Jason movie. So I like that. I think the movie had some of the best Jason kills. I thought the craftmatic bed folded in half okay. with the kids folded inside of it was great. Right. Uh, as our friend Jim Pinkstone pointed out to, to me recently, when Jason is getting electrocuted yeah. and he just grabs a person next to him because his whole mentality is, how do I just kill somebody right. immediately right. who's near me? That's a great kill. That being said, just some of the lowest points for Freddy's. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I don't even know where to start. For me, when the guy's standing in the blood, kind of a cool scene when he sees his brother who's commit suicide in the blood in the bathtub. Kind of a cool scene. You know that Scott Farkas from A yeah. Christmas Story? Yes, I did. Yeah. I could tell by on sight. And how sometimes he looks, he plays the oldest kid in the Christmas Story. Yeah. So he looks like he's 29 yeah. still. Yeah. It's insane. Anyway, sorry. Um, but Freddy's entire like set piece for that room is to have five like strands of blood encircle his feet. That was one of the lamest things I've ever seen. There's supposed to be like worms or something. 
It was pathetic, Joe. Well, it looked shitty. It was bad it CG. Shitty. There's I mean, a lot they, of bad CG. Movies movie. from like 83 in that franchise look better than these. Yeah, because they use practical effects. They yeah. use a lot of bad CG in the movie. I agree. Uh, my Here are my Freddy low points because I've got a list. Okay. The pot worm. Oh, Joe. <laughs> I thought I was still high from the night before watching that shit. That was embarrassing. The pot worm is terrible. He like breathes weed to the kids. I guess that somebody must have said, look, who, who do you think is really going to a movie called Freddy vs. Jason? Stoners. They want to see themselves on screen. Maybe. I guess. That had to have been like a new line, you know, sort of pitch. Uh, dark meat we already mentioned. Uh, <laughs> opening monologue is great until he goes... Being dead's one thing, but then they forgot about me, and that's a bitch. Yeah. Come on, guys. <laughs> yeah, he's calling everybody a bitch in the movie. And if he's he very vain, it's kind of a Sunset Boulevard story. He says bitch a lot, which is one of the funny jokes, apparently, that, again, Pinkstone told me about it, that uh, they did an episode of Rick and Morty with Freddy where he kept saying bitch. That was a good one. That was yeah. a funny one. Uh, and it's hilarious because I went to Hollywood Horror Nights at Universal Studios and I went through the Freddy versus Jason haunted house. Yeah. And at one point you hear Freddy say, welcome to my nightmare, bitch. <laughs> I'm like, they can't even stop him from saying it in the <laughs> Universal Studios haunted house ride. No, I, I need to say bitch. Uh, Wait. Um, oh, and then the, 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 the lowest of all the scenes in, 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 in Freddy's entire career is him crotch thrusting jason around the boiler room as pinball noises are happening yeah, i couldn't believe my eyes and then jason falls and he goes tilt <laughs> what the fuck and this is what made me so that was, mad. that was pretty pretty nuts this is what made tilt. me so, so mad when so many nightmare fans were like that fucking remake sucked and it's like did it suck they made Freddy kind of scary again. Uh -huh. Okay, it wasn't a great flick, but Jesus Christ. Right. Don't you prefer that to the pinball gag? <laughs> anyway. Do you you like both the Nightmare remake and the Friday the 13th remake, correct? I like them both fine. I find them entertaining. Uh, I know they're not as good as the originals, but, but you know, they're fine. You know, I've only seen Friday the 13th 1 and Freddy vs. Jason. That's it. And I've seen... All of the Freddies. The Friday the 13th remake yeah. has the best Jason kill ever, ever in it. All right. Next to Jason X. All right. Jason X, there's a scene where he dumps a lady's head into liquid nitrogen. Her whole head freezes. Then he smashes it on a table and it turns into blood slushy. That's a pretty fantastic kill. Uh, and yeah, who wrote Jason X has like this big article go going around for years about how he lives in his car. That was just one. It's not a great movie. Hey, it was one <laughs> shot. He's just like, it's a cautionary tale. I, but I did enjoy the film. Uh, and then in Jason, in the Friday the 13th remake, right at the top, he puts some kid in like a sleeping bag and then just hangs it over a fire. Okay. Good. Pretty kill. dark. Um, but there was, look, look, there was some amazing. That was the other thing, too, with this. Uh, while we're on Jason. Uh, there's a I went on Wikipedia today to read about it. They recast Jason. It's not Toby Hooper. Right. Well, it was, this, it was never Toby Hooper. I mean, not sorry. It wasn't Kane Hodder. Excuse me. It's Tobey Hooper. <laughs> Marissa Tobey Hooper. But the director's justification for needing because there was a lot of backlash from fans. They're like, New How? Line blames it on the director. The director blames it on New Line. Yeah. Who's lying? They they're all lying. They're all lying. Uh, but the director's. Quote was, I wanted a slower Jason. Yeah. Well, why don't you just tell Kane Hunter to walk slower? <laughs> walk a little slower, yeah. Yeah. Um, I will give this to the actor that played Jason. Uh, it is the only Friday the 13th I've ever seen where I feel you feel sorry for Jason a little bit. He yeah. is the oh, sort I was of, totally rooting for Jason. Throughout. Yeah. He's like, the King up, Kong of it, you know? Yeah. He's the King Kong. You feel bad for him. So then it, it does almost the same thing, if I remember correctly, as Alien versus Predator, where it's like one has one, but then the other one like shows like, no, I'm still here. The what is it? Freddy winks. You know, Jason's holding Fuck his head that. and Freddy Fuck winks. That fucking ending. And then I think the ending of the first Alien versus Predator, which was almost unwatchable, was that the alien had won, but then the Predator like shows that he's still alive. 
I think they did the, s- the same remember. exact thing. I honestly don't remember. But then they never did Freddy vs. Jason 2, even though this made a ton of money. Why do you think that is? Because this was supposed to be the end. Oh, okay. This was supposed but to be... That's never stopped them before. I think this was really supposed to be the end. Right. After the final nightmare and the and the final Friday, I think this really was supposed to be like, you know, we're, we're, we're able to... We, we've somehow worked this all out and we're going to do this once. I mean, but here's the thing. It's like, I'm glad there wasn't a sequel. And this is why the wink pisses me off so much. And this is why the fight at the end of the movie makes no fucking sense. The fight makes sense when Jason's in Freddy's, when Freddy's in Jason's nightmare. Yeah. Because Freddy is all powerful in the dream world. When Freddy gets pulled out into the real world, guess what? He's just a regular guy. Right. So how was he able to go up against this superhuman guy? Jason would kill him in two seconds flat. Not to mention his body is decayed from being burned. <laughs> to, to to God knows what end. Yeah. So that bugs me. It bugs me at the end that Freddy All great winks. Points, Joe. Because Freddy's not immortal. Freddy's immortal in after death. He's not immortal in the real world. The whole thing is if you pull him in the real world, he dies. So that bothers me that they just kind of spit in the face of the of the uh logic, if you will, of uh of the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. Um here's another thing that bothered me. The, the the goddamn soundtrack. Oh yeah. Well that there was a period of ten years where everything was like, ooh, uh, uh, uh. that you know, that song was in every one of these fucking horror movies. Disturbed or the sickness or whatever it was. Well, it's that stuff. It's the shitty metal songs, but then it's also the fucking like don't put a goddamn John Williams orchestra be- behind every like <laughs> suspenseful Freddy chase. Yeah. It ruins it. Yeah. Like, leave some quiet. It's not scary when there's a fucking string section every three seconds, you know? Yeah. Uh, That all being said, I will give some nods to what I liked about the film. And tell me if you agree. Joe's really going into, like, book report mode with this thing. Well, I wanted to be prepared. uh, Pros and cons. Uh, I thought there were some amazing, amazing visuals in the film that were truly creepy. The kids in the comas. The okay. coma kids with their eyes covered. That was really creepy. Flaming Jason I already mentioned. I'd like to recommend the song Coma Girl by Joe Strummer and the Mescaleros. That's my sp- scary stuff. Coma Girl. It's a great song. <laughs> Joe Strummer, lead singer of The Clash. Uh, ha- also had a fine solo career. Not enough people know about. Check it out. Uh, the entire opening sequence is quite enjoyable, except for the bitch line. It's fun seeing the the Freddy backstory and stuff. Yeah. And it's very well shot. I like seeing all the like the best of hits. Have you the seen Jason like Nightmares the, is amazing. Yeah. When he's like f- walking to that cabin, dragging the body. Right. And then he opens the door and there's the bodies floating that. And then Freddy jumping out of the lake. Yeah, that was cool. Looks really cool. And then they kind of made him look like Freddy from New Nightmare. So that was yet another nod to the series, which I liked. So th- th- those were very, very cool visuals. And then also the mouth to mouth scene is fantastic. Yeah. When Kelly Rowland almost, almost has to give mouth to mouth to Jason, it's so disgusting. And then he just like yeah. fucking comes awake and the van crashes. That's a really cool, fun scene. What's up? I mean, no, no, nothing. It's uh, it, it is what it is. It's not great. Certainly. I think we're both agreeing. Joe liked it more than I did. But neither of these franchises are, are ones I'm obsessed with. You know, I, yeah. I, I, I like them, but. I went and looked up the the cast of the film. Sure. Because you don't see them in a ton of other stuff. I looked up a few of them. It was a very busty collection. Uh, did you look up that lead actress, yes. Dina something? I sure did. I mean, talk about zigging when you should have zagged. <laughs> this is a girl in a movie with... Oh, no. Playing with, she's in a movie. Jason Ritter plays the male lead in this movie. Yeah. Certainly a dashing, fine young man. I'm sure this girl's fucking striking. She's a great actress. You know, she's got personality. I'm sure she had more than a shot with Jason Ritter. Uh, didn't hook up with him, apparently, or at least as far as I know. Followed this up with the uh, film uh, Night of the Demons remake. Right. It was direct to video. I believe it came after Freddy versus Jason uh, and chose to get hunker down with Eddie Furlong. Oh, she's <laughs> married to Eddie, Eddie Furlong? Well, they were dating. He was arrested three times for domestic abuse. Oh, boy. Uh, and then I found an article that said she broke her own restraining order to have lunch with Eddie Furlong. And there's all these pictures of them together. And they both look like 
They said in the article she's 34 years old. She looks like she's coming around the bend of a 54 <laughs> year old like she looks like mickey rourke would have hit on her in barfly i mean uh -huh. it's, it is rough stuff yeah and i'm not trying to kick her when she's down but i you think like meth? i realize that's kind of what i'm doing she's like clearly yeah there was it's it was very sad because you're like here's this girl that was like had such a promising career and it's a sad with eddie furlong too yeah. he was really fucking talented man yeah. and they both look like yeah they got the bags under the eyes like something something's going on there yeah Something's going on there. Here, talk, talk, I'll look up the picture. Keep talking. All right. What's her name? Monica Kina? Oh, yeah. I thought it was. What did I say? Zena? I think you said Zena. Jesus Christ. Uh, they had that guy, Lachlan Monroe, who everybody thought was going to be the next big comedy star. Play, the guy that plays the sheriff. You know, he was in like Dead Man on Campus. And so they, they really tried to force him as like a Ryan Reynolds for a few years. And it didn't quite materialize. You got me. Um. Yeah, the 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 dad trying to kiss her moment was kind of effective, creepy. You know, when Freddie inhabits her dad, all the dad stuff was kind of good go. and creepy. Here we go. There's the picture. All right, <laughs> you, you'd still hook up with that woman. Uh, you, that's you, you would. That's another. That's like another Nick Stahl situation. Yeah, where it's like, ugh, it's sad, man. People this just town. A lot of people can't take it. Sometimes Look I don't know that if picture, I can take they it. had a snapshot of Eddie Furlock fixing All her hair. Right. <laughs> All right. This is bringing me down. Yeah. Uh, that That's my favorite one where he's like, something has happened. He's comforting he, her. He's, he went too far. In a, he's in a, they're in a diner, by the way. Right. So two of the two <laughs> kids started that looks Terminator like, uh, 2. <laughs> look, final scene of Buffalo 66. <laughs> um, Oof. Yeah, and then I mean, at the end of the article, wait, wait a second, hold on. At the end of the article, they say, got somewhere to be, Eddie? Because they have several shots of him <laughs> racing from the front door to his car. He's yeah. just several shots of him running. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. That was that was a lot a lot for me to take. Yeah, sorry. Uh, anyway, so that's uh Freddy versus Jason, you know. That was Eddie Furlong versus Freddy versus Jason. Pretty good uh, in my book. Not great. Very flawed, but a fun Saturday afternoon movie. That's my final uh, sure. consensus. I guess that. Now, Joe, before we leave, if you could have any two characters in movie history duke it out, who would, who would you pick? I already had it. It was Batman versus Superman. Oh, Christ. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm moving on. No, what would, you, what would yours be? Oh, I don't know. Uh, I'll tell you, uh, I think it was Bruce. Was it Bruce Willis? No, it wasn't Bruce Willis. It was Kurt Russell. Okay. Said recently, he goes, you know, I tried to pitch the Avengers in the 80s with like action heroes. Oh, nice. Where it would be like all of our characters. And he, like, I guess basically it would have been like Snake Plissken, the Terminator, fucking Rocky or Rambo. Yeah, Rambo. And I was like, that sounds fucking awesome. Why don't they do that? Well, that was kind of what the uh, Expendables, Expendables was. was. Yeah, yeah. But uh, but I don't know. He was like, yeah, nobody nobody thought anybody wanted to see that crap. <laughs> <laughs> now it's huge. Oh, well, whatever. Well, hopefully they get it on board. When did he want to do this? Like the 80s? Yeah, in like the late 80s. Like and when instead they, were they all, all just got together and opened to Planet Hollywood, folks. Yeah, yeah. If and John Balky's jacket from yeah. the set of Perfect Strangers, while John Goodman and Dan Aykroyd played, <laughs> yeah, the, blues the real Harp. brothers. <laughs> um, yeah. All right, folks. No, you didn't say who'd see Duke it out, or did you? Did I? Didn't I? I don't know. I I, I hate questions like this. You asked That's the question. Why I asked you. I would pick Kevin from Home Alone, <laughs> and. Uh, the devil from the devil's advocate just pacino screaming at kevin from home alone okay it's not what i would pick but i have to say something i would pick but wouldn't uh, you like to see al pacino scream at a child i would pick uh at his hammiest i would pick anakin skywalker pre darth vader okay <laughs> but but evil <laughs> all right before he becomes the in the suit i mean so just just uh jake lloyd or no. just Hayden Christensen. It, but evil Hayden Christensen right. at the end of the third movie versus Return of the Jedi Luke Skywalker. 
Okay. That'd be fun to see. All right. Very specific. Well, you asked the question. Folks, that's our show. Pat, are you plugging? Uh, I am on Twitter and Instagram at the Patrick Walsh. And I really don't have anything else to plug, frankly. I'm at Jodorosa Comedy on Twitter and Instagram. Thank you all for listening. I'll be in San Francisco at the Punchline uh, August 30th through September 3rd, I think it is, or 2nd. Also, real quick. So come on out and see me. I'm headlining a bunch of shows up there. Uh, our Facebook page just crossed like 400 members, which is really fucking awesome. Uh, thank you, Emily, who runs it. Thank you, Emily. Uh, we'll see you in hell on Facebook. I still love reading like the little recaps. I send them to Joe. We crack up over them. It's awesome. Thank you. And another thing, if you live in the Los Angeles area at the uh, Egyptian Theater on Hollywood Boulevard here in Los Angeles, Friday night, they're doing Creep Show, Creep Show 2, and Cat's Eye. Joe and I are discussing going, schedule dependent, but uh, whether we do or we don't, a horror fan should want to be at that show. So uh, maybe we'll see you there, but I hope you go regardless. I uh, had a perf. It was you had a perfect. Maybe we'll see you there, and maybe we'll see you in hell. That was a headgum podcast. <laughs>